Hello, and welcome to The Lion's Den. I'm your host, Matt, as always. And I think this week is a bit of a game week, to be honest, because that's the most relevant sort of topics that have happened this week. So let's start off with the elephant in the room, or rather, the sauce in the room. Yesterday was the 31st of March, shocker, I know, and the new Among Us map came out. So me and some friends got together and we decided to play that. And it was a nightmare. Don't know if it was just because everyone was trying to play because that's when the map came out or if it was something on our side or what, but no, it was an absolute nightmare. So the biggest problem is they've added this weird pseudo account system thing that's not really an account system, it's just a weird thing they put in. But the problem is it has a weird connection to you as a player because it gives you I don't even know how to explain it but essentially when you're trying to join an online match it requires that you have this weird pseudo account thing to get on and play online and it just wouldn't work it kept saying that it couldn't authenticate us because we didn't have an account even though we did have an account and it said we had an account but it wouldn't let us log on so we were all sat there for like minutes 10 20 odd minutes just trying to join the same game as each other and none of us could get on except for when you randomly then did get on for no inherent reason and everyone was getting different results and it was an absolute nightmare but I think it kind of petered out as we got later into the night after a couple of hours from when the map had been released it seemed to get a bit better and a bit easier to log on probably because people were giving up and not playing anymore or they just had enough so yeah that was not fun but the new map interesting map it is huge honestly it is massive and that is its biggest downside i think not to mention there are two areas that have gaps in them so there's only a very few select areas that can actually allow you to loop around the entire map that's not it's not the best design personally for probably for accuracy of what it's trying to represent it's great but trying to actually play on it is not fun in my opinion the tasks as well are very unsignposted. They don't really tell you how they function or how to do them, which is maybe my fault for not practicing them before, but we all just kind of jumped on them and went for it because who's we gonna try things before you play them with friends, you know? Uh, but we got a fair few matches out. We played for two, two and a half hours. So it was good fun because Among Us is a fun game. Just that map, I don't think is for me personally. But if you get a chance to try it, I'd recommend it. it is a bit of a laugh because Among Us is a laugh you know so the other thing that finally came last week on Friday I got my Banjo and Kazooie amiibo very nice because I pre-ordered that back in ooh, end of January early February and that finally arrived so I was training that the other day and my amiibo were very stupid probably because I'm very stupid when I play Smash I don't <laughs> play it very intelligently so when i'm fighting against my amiibo it also picks up my idiosyncrasies and it's quite funny to watch it honestly because even with the damage multiplier they get as they level up i can still defeat them quite easily because they're playing like an idiot like me so that's always fun he's not level 50 yet because i kind of got bored at about level 40 <laughs> so i do just need to kind of take him to 50 because why not? And maybe I'll make my amiibo fight each other, because that's always semi-interesting, although that does get old very quickly. But the amiibo itself is quite nice. I wish they'd changed his mouth slightly to make it look like he was smiling more. It's kind of almost a neutral position with his mouth, uh, whereas Kazooie actually looks happy and smiling. But I love the little rare logo on his backpack on the back of it, which is something you can't actually see, I don't think, until you take it out of the package, so that's nice. Also, it's funny that it says Microsoft 2021 on the base, because obviously owned by Microsoft. I was also be interested if somebody could 3D print puzzle pieces that would fit onto the actual puzzle piece on the model. That would be really cool to see if someone could do that. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I think it would be um, just a neat little thing, you know? Other games, Spin Rhythm. So this is a rhythm game I've been playing recently. I can't remember if I've talked about it before, but... Oh, it's so good. It's so satisfying. Um, the controls are fairly intuitive as well, which is what I like in a rhythm game. I like it when it's really easy to pick up and play and you can understand it quite simply. 
but the difficulty can just ramp up to a mad level. Because, I mean, their hardest difficulty level they call XD, because it's like a laughing face, you know, you're thinking, oh, oh my god, it's crazy. Um, but they updated it recently, and it was kind of a balance patch, I suppose you could call it, because they changed a lot of the tracks to have better feel to them, so that they're not as janky, that's the way they put it, there's less awkwardness to how the layout works and flows. But to me, what I saw is that they basically just decreased the difficulty of all of the uh, levels. So for each track, there's five levels starting from beginner to XD. And what used to be, say, like a hard difficulty now feels like a normal difficulty to me personally, which is a shame. And I also know the numbers that represent like what level they think it is. So now 15, 18, whatever, those numbers have decreased since the, the update. Which is a bit of a shame, because I liked the difficulty that I was accustomed to. And some of them, the way they've changed how the map is played, doesn't fit with the music quite as nicely as it used to. Which is a real big shame, in my opinion. What can you do? You can't. I don't think you can downgrade to a previous version. And the online functions wouldn't work if you went back to a previous version anyway. So, but hey, you just deal with what you've got, you know, uh, and you move forward. Because the one good thing that came out of it is they added, I think, three new tracks. And one of them, oh, it's so good. It's so, oh, I love how it sounds. I love how the tracks play. I hope they don't change the, the track layouts again. Because the way they made uh, this one play is just so satisfying. So good. The other thing is, because obviously they dropped the difficulty of pretty much all of the tracks it meant that the the hardest level difficulty the xd on some of the tracks i really enjoy has come down a bit and made it slightly more accessible for me to get into that top tier awkward pretty stupidly crazy stuff <laughs> because i basically couldn't go past maybe expert around level 20 and all of the xd ones are maybe 24 and above which is just who a monumental hill to kind of climb over so that's fun that i can actually try that um, and some of the leaderboards, actually, yeah, the leaderboards, that's another thing. They've adjusted them so that there's more variance in what score you can get based on how well you can time your, like, clicks and beats to the track, which, I mean, it's a rhythm game, it should do that. Because the previous um, leaderboards just had a bunch of people in first place, because if you got a full combo, there was just a max score that you could have, whereas now the max score is a lot more variable based on how good your rhythm is i suppose which is nice so it means that you can kind of climb the leaderboards a lot easier and have a distinction between who's actually the first and then where you like lie below that and then some of them i've gotten fairly high i don't know if that's just because there's not a lot of people playing or there hasn't been many people that have played since the new leaderboards because obviously they reset to zero so i kind of slid in and sniped to like 15th place on a couple of tracks which is nice I want to get on the leaderboard because it goes from 1 to 12, oddly. They have the top 12. So if I, get, if I could get to a score on 12th, that'd be really cool because then I'd get to see my name on a leaderboard. But we'll see. I did actually get my name on a leaderboard on what's it called? Avicii and Vector. That's another really game I was playing. I should probably pick it back up because, oh, those songs are so good. Yeah, with those, I tried so hard to get on a leaderboard and I got on, I think, three or four on multiple different tracks so that was really nice because again in vg vector has this thing where you get a boost gauge that doubles your multiplier score so there's a bit of strategy as to when do you use that boost meter because it makes you drive faster so it's harder to kind of predict when you're supposed to be hitting the beats because you have messed up your timings but also there's the reward of you get points and obviously if you use it in a section with a lot of stuff to get points off of then you're gonna go really high. Uh, that should do it for me, actually. I could talk about rhythm games all day. But anyway, if you've enjoyed listening to my ramblings, ah, tongue tied. Uh, do remember this is a YouTube channel, <laughs> not something like Spotify for a podcast. I know I'm stupid. So subscribe, like, leave a comment if you do. Share it with your friends, please. I would like to get more people listening to my stupid rambling. <laughs> anyway, bye.